Okay, guys, by the way, before we start, I have to let you know that uh, the recurring sessions which I have set up on Zoom, it's going to end today. Then I have to set up a new account with the new passcode for logging into the Zoom and make the connection to the internet in order to uh, uh, have the sessions. Then today, you are going to receive an email from me uh, to, the announce, to the updates of the site that I provide you with the new passcode for the recurring sessions for the next month. Then please make sure that tomorrow there is a new passcode to log into the class. Okay? Okay. Awesome. Uh, okay, let me uh, today, the plan which we have today is that for the first half of the class, we do some kind of a review. I, we, we solve some problems together. Uh, because we have learned lots of identity and it's a good time that we stop somewhere and try to uh, review the things which we have done. And that's the plan for the first half of the class. The second half of the class, probably we start with the new topic. Then, then from next Monday, we start by the inverse of the trigonometric function. That's the plan which we are going to have for uh, for um, these um, the, these sessions. Okay, today before we move on, I have uh, two I should say two identities that we are just going to work with. The first one, give me one second. I bring the thing which I taught you yesterday. I think it was this one that we worked on it yesterday. Okay. Uh, before I start, is the lighting is good? You see clearly what I have written here? Or the light is too much or less? Um, too much. It's too it's... much light? Yes. Is it good now? Um, um, yeah. How about now? Yes, it's okay. Thank you. It's better? It's better. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, everyone, uh, please remember that before I give you, uh, we're planning to review two, two examples before we start the new lesson. And these two examples which we're going to review is essentially these uh, two identities that we learned. It was essentially the sine squared of the alpha and the cosine squared of the alpha, I, the day before yesterday, we learned that the sine squared of the alpha is essentially one minus cosine two alpha divided by two, and cosine squared of the alpha is cosine two alpha plus one divided by two. I hope everyone has this identity. Good morning, Sean. Good morning, good morning. I just... Sean, we are entering into the math, international math modeling challenge on May the 7th. And today, everyone, we are going to watch a video. We are going to watch a video. It's going to be an exciting day today for us. Just stay tuned then. Then we have some fun stuff to do. Mathematical modeling challenge. That's oh, right. It's be challengeable. <laughs> what? It's <will> going be challengeable. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Okay. Give me one second. I'm still looking for some items. Give me one second. <clears throat> yes, we, we, we said that we just derived these identities. And these identities that we drove the day before yesterday, we used them in two different instances. The first instance was that we were using these identities successively in applications that we covered that on the day before yesterday, and it was essentially uh, here. For example, eight, I, we had it the day before yesterday. Everyone can see what I have written here? Yes. Yeah? We had this before that we said that eight, for example, sine to the power of four of the x we saw that how can we just reduce its power successively until we reach to the case that the power is only one. For example, you saw that we just have to the power four. 
we, we just made it to the fundamental power of the sine squared of the x, because for the sine squared of the x, we have the basic identity, then the trick was always to break the power, the exponents of the sine and cosine in a way that we have sine squared of the x somewhere hidden. Then from this one, we notice that we can use the identity that we had, that the sine squared is going to be 1 minus cosine of 2x divided by 2. Then the power 2 was remaining. Then uh, we expanded it. Then we had one more term of the cosine squared. And we know that the cosine squared is this identity, that 1 plus cosine of the 2 alpha, which becomes 4x. Then we saw that at the end, we can simplify we reached to this stage that you remember that we had, we broke the exponent, which was initially was four into a terms, as you will see, they have one, the power, the exponents that they have. It's only one. And that's the kind of a magic that we learned. We were able to break the high exponents of trigonometric identities and ratios and functions, particular functions, because we are now working with the functions. And with one function, which it had a term, which is sine 4x, we were able to find another function that that function had three terms that all of them, they had what? That all of them, they had, let's say, the power of one on top. And that's something tremendous that we did. One function is decomposed into three more function that they are linearly combined to produce the same effect that was tremendous anybody has a question about this no question linda was it you uh, no question teacher awesome thank you if anybody has no question we want to follow the same route and at the same time, I just want to, I want to give you two examples of this kind of, I should say, magical thing which we did. Honestly, I like pretty much this thing a lot because uh, 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 this is incredibly important. And uh, that's a good thing that we are going to start with it then today. Then now, uh, what we want to do is that we go back to the main thing which we have. I'm going to give you some examples. And guys, at the same time, I just want to ask you, please, remember, when I give you the function and you're going to decompose that into lower power series, please remember, make sure that you plot both functions. On Desmos, you are going to get the same plot. And also, please do that, and you're going to share your screen with us. Okay, now, I'm going to give you this function, too. I'm going to give you the function, let's call it f of x, equals to 2 to the sine to the power of 6x. Everybody can see that? Yes, guys? Yes. Awesome. Please yes. now, guys, you have a function. Your function is composed of one term with the power of six. You are going to decompose that into the same function, which it has more terms, but all of them has exponent one. That's the plan. That's the beauty of this function today. Please do that and also make sure you plot at the end two functions. You should get to the same graph on Desmos. Please go on. I'll give you maybe three minutes. Thank you. 
Okay, guys, how, how are you doing? Everyone is doing great? Yep. Nice. Sean, are you ready for the math challenge? Oh, okay. I will try it. Let's, let's try. Yeah. May the 7th. I'm so excited for it. I'm doing this also. Anybody is done? Guys, are you asleep today? Well, they just turn off their mute. Ah. I'm doing some work and also you do your work, then I share that with you then. By the way, the math modeling contest, I'm going to show some video today also based on the things that we have done so far, based on the bacterial mitosis and the Hodgkin-Huxley model, those kind of stuff, it's essentially almost nothing. It's going to be very easy. Oh. And I also recommend anybody else who is in the class who is interested, they can still attend the math modeling contest. Who is done? Mingjie, Sean, Linda, Aria, Oliver, Brian. Who is done? Mingjie is very quiet today. Mingjie, are you there? Uh, yes. Oh, you're quiet today. Are you sleepy? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> what time did you wake up, Mingzi, today? 8.15. Oh, I think, who else? Oh, yeah, yeah, you said that. Oh, yeah, yeah, you said that before. 8.15. <laughs> it seems that I'm the one who is sleepy today. <laughs> I asked you the same question twice. Guys, please also make sure that use the Desmos to plot the function two times sine to the power six of the x. Are you done, Mingzhi? Uh, I'm done, but the two graphs are not uh, are not same. Ah, okay. <laughs> How about you, Sean? Linda? Yes. Are you done? Mm, mm, yes. Oh, fantastic. Guys, how about, do you see the colors? The, do you see the thing which I'm writing? This is not too dark, not too shiny. Is it fine? Yeah, it is fine. Yes. Okay. Because sometimes I watch the video which is recorded and sometimes I'm very embarrassed because it seems that nothing is visible for you guys. And I felt so bad yesterday. I was reading some videos and it turned out to be some kind of disaster. 
Okay. Guys, please, um, Arya, how about you? Are you done? Yes, teacher, can you um, um, please move closer? Closer, huh? Yes, thank you. Closer, how can I possibly do that? I, to be honest, uh, I cannot do that because I have to bring it up. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay, no, no problem. It's okay, it's okay, teacher. But can you see some stuff or? I can see that. I can okay. see, I can see. Thank Thanks, you so because much. the laptop is there and I can, I have to just... Okay, okay. Let me say, if this is fine. I bring it oh, up. No, 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 teacher. That's okay, that's okay. That's okay? Oh. Yes, yes, thank you. No problem. Guys, I'm just going to start to review some context with you. Then, then uh, you can do the rest yourself. I follow some, some basic principle there. Uh, Look at this one. We started with the function which it had only one term, and the function was two times sine squared to the power of six of the x. Always remember that's the strategy which I adopt myself. That whenever I just want to use the power reduction technique, I do not memorize the formula. I always know that I have to start with this formula. That the cosine of two x. It's always easy to remember that cosine of 2x becomes cosine squared of the x minus sine squared of the x. And I know that I have to rewrite this in the term that I put it for the sine x. Then it means that I need to replace cosine squared of the x with 1 minus sine squared of the x, which essentially it means that then it turns out to be what? it turns out to be cosine of 2x becomes 1 minus 2 times sine squared of the x. And you can just find what is sine squared of the x by rearranging the terms around the equality sign, then you get this one there. Okay? <clears throat> and now, you see, I didn't need to memorize this formula. I could easily derive it then even not today for the next 20 years for the next 20 years honestly you can still derive this formula because you know how systematically you can get to this point and now when you are there you come back to this formula two times sine six to the power x i can always the trick is this the trick is this that i can rewrite it in a way that always I have sine squared of the x as a building blocks somewhere hidden. Then if you decide to do that, you see that you have sine squared of the x, then you have to come to put the power tree on top. Because you know that in that case, when power tree is going to work, it multiplies to 2 and becomes 6 then you see that the function itself was rewritable in terms of this. And now I see that I have sine squared of the x, and I know what is sine squared of the x. I can substitute it instead there. Then it becomes two times. Instead of sine squared, I write one minus cosine two x divided by two to the power three. I get it of this constant. 2 to the power 3 becomes 8. I take this out, becomes 2 divided by 8, becomes 4. 1 over 4, and the term is going to be this. And now, I have to do what? I have to do some, I should say, expansion. Then expansion becomes what? Becomes 1 over 4. And I expand the term inside with the power 3. 1 to the power 3 becomes how much? Becomes 1. Cosine 2x to the power 3 becomes what? Minus cosine to the power 3 of the 2x plus uh, becomes minus this one to this one 3 times of cosine 2x and plus, uh, still becomes minus, uh, minus three times this one to the power two 
cosine 2, 2x. Two when you expand this one there. Right? Everyone is following me now? Yes. Yes? Any questions? Nope. Nope. Okay. Guys, look at this one here. Again, we got to the same problem. Still, you see that. You see that I have, again, two terms, which is cosine to the power 3 of the x, and also cosine to the power 2 of the x. which is not the thing which I planned for, because the thing which I planned for was to have all the terms reach in power one. Now I have cosine, the power is three, and also I have what? And I have cosine, which is the power is two, right? Then I have to again use this formula again. Any questions so far? Linda, Aria, Oliver, Brian, everyone is no doing great? Yes. Let me get, grab some more papers. Okay. And what did you end up with here? Here you ended up with uh, f of x is now 1 over 4. One minus cosine to the power 3 of 2x minus 3 cosine of 2x and uh, this one also becomes uh, uh, I forgot the identity which it was there uh, guys is it is it right the way which I expanded this function if you use the identity for it the identity was what let me write this one here it was this one a uh, minus b to the power 3 was a to the power 3 plus, what was that? It was three or two. Guys, anyone remembers this identity? It was a to the power three plus minus b to the power three. It was three or two plus uh, three a squared b plus uh, a, B, a, B squared. A, B squared. Oh, okay, that's right, huh? Okay, then in that case, we have, uh, thanks, John. Then it becomes, uh, when you expand it, it becomes, I think I was correct then there. It becomes 1 minus cosine 3 to the power 2x, then becomes plus minus 3 cosine 2x, then also plus. 3 cosine squared of 2x. Fantastic. We got to this point. And now, at the next stage, what needs to be done? You have to do this like that. You say that 1 over 4, f of x becomes 1 over 4. And for cosine 3 of the power x, guys, what do you recommend me to do? What is the best option? Because we have cosine 3, but we know cosine is squared of the x. What is that? I can write it as what? As 1 minus cosine x times cosine squared of 2x, correct? Minus cosine 2x plus... 3 cosine squared of 2x. There's lots of successive 
I should say, uh, calculations for the ones which comes with the power two. And you can write it at the end what? As one over four. One minus cosine of the x multiplies two to what? For cosine of two x, we drive that formula before. That the, you can also drive it as they have drive it, I should say, initially with the cosine of two x. Cosine squared of the x becomes cosine of 2x plus 1 divided by 2. Then as a result, it becomes what? It becomes 1 plus cosine. 2 times of the arc there. My arc here, the angle is 2x. Then 2 times of it becomes how much? 4x divided by 2. minus cosine of 2x plus 3 and again the same thing you have to do that but this time it's going to be again cosine of 2 squared of the x becomes 1 plus cosine of 4x divided by 2 and everything is done any questions guys yet so far no nope. No, everyone is fine. Yes? Linda, Aria, Brian, Oliver, Mingzhi. Yes. Yeah. Are you left behind or no? Just you are just right on the same page. Everyone is doing great? Yes. yes. Okay. Fantastic. And now, okay, oh, too much calculation. And now we have only one more step left, guys. And what is that step? That step is that, remember, we have one cosine of the x. Here, look at this one. I have one cosine of the x here. which is going to be multiplied to all the terms there. Once to this, and once to this. And I'm going to do that, and essentially by doing this, we should be done. I'm going to keep 1 over 4 back at the end. Then I'm just going to write f of x. f of x was initially what? two times of sine to the power of six of x is going to be equal to, I'm going to expand these terms. I'm going to write one over four at the back. I'm going to expand cosine x into that thing. Then it becomes what? It becomes minus. Still, I can keep the parentheses there because I'm going to keep two, 1 over 2 before. It depends on how do you want to do that. It becomes cosine x plus cosine x cosine 4x. Now that I have minus cosine of 2x plus the last term I'm going to take 2 outside becomes 3 over 2 of 1 plus cosine of 4x. And now we are done. Oh, look at this function. Interesting looking function. Oh my God, it was too much work. Give me one second. I need to just grab some word. I need to get hydrated. 
Oh, too much calculation, guys. Too much situation. That's, that's right. Oh, my God. Eight. <laughs> too much thing to do on the morning. <laughs> yeah. Guys, and now you're done. And you see that by using the successive replacements of the even powers of sine and cosine that you learned before, I was able that if I had a function which it was only one term, two to the power, two sine to the power six of x, and now this function is decomposed, is decomposed into many other terms, and the interesting thing is that all those, all of those trigonometric ratio, they have power one. This is not power six. You see that? And that's the beauty of the power reduction techniques. You start with one term and you expand it, you just go all over it. Any questions, guys? Nope. Awesome. Thanks, John. Any, anybody else? Linda. Mm, Aria. Yes, teacher. Linda, do you have any questions? Mm, no. Okay, thanks. How about you, uh, how about you, Aria? Oh, okay, no worries. I just go. How about Nije? Uh, no questions. Everything is fine? Yeah. <clears throat> how about you, Brian? Brian? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How did he, man? Mm, not bad. Not bad. Are you checking the videos of the previous sessions that you missed? Mm, not every video. Uh -huh, no worries. All I, I can see the quality is not good. We do one more example, Brian. By that, I hope that you learn much of this stuff. If no, let me know that. Okay. Mm. Okay, now. We are going to move on, guys, for the start of the day. It was too much math. Oh. Okay. I'm going to give you one more. Oh, my God. Time is almost getting 9.45. The time flies so fast. Now, I'm going to give you something very interesting. Okay, now I'm going to give you the function f of x is going to be sine to the power of 4x mm, times cosine to the power 2x. Guys, give this one a try. It's this this one is very interesting. Oliver, are you there? No. Okay, I think five minutes should be good for you guys to finish it.
Guys, how are you doing on this? Mingji? Yes. How is how is it going on with this? Uh, I'm still ah. uh, trying to solve it. Ah, okay. Good luck. Is it easy or hard? Uh a little bit hard. Oh. <laughs> yes, you're right. It's not easy. <laughs> but that's a good practice. Okay. Sean, how are you doing on it? Uh, I'm also trying to do it. Uh -huh. Sean? Yes. I can't hear you, man. Okay, I I'm also doing it. Oh, okay. Nice. How about you, Linda? Okay, guys, who's, who's done now? Ming 
J are you done? Uh, not yet. It's it's too much stuff to do, huh? Uh, yes. Okay, guys, who is done? No one yet? Okay. Okay, guys, who is done? Linda? Linda I know finish because a little uh, diff different. That's right, that's right. I do agree that this one was not an easy example because <laughs> It's easy in a sense, Linda, but it has lots of, I should say, complications, lots of replacements, calculations. It's a kind of a headache, actually. <laughs> Not easy. Okay. But guys, please stop whatever you are doing now. I'm going to give you a clue. What is the best approach? Then you please do that as a homework submitted to me tonight then. Okay. Okay. Guys, look at this. Mingje, Sean, Linda, Oliver, Aria, Brian, and everyone else. Please listen here. 
The best approach to do that in order not to get inside too much complications is this. Please, when you start with this function that sine to the power x cosine squared of the x, start with the sine to the power 4 of the x. Starts with the one which it seems has a higher power, then it deserves to have some more work with it. I sine to the power 4 of the x is essential like sine squared of the x to the power 2, right? Sine squared of the x, you know that from function 11, is 1 minus cosine squared of the x. And because it all goes to the power 2 and this one, you know that 1 minus cosine squared of the x becomes sine squared of the x, then to the power 2 becomes sine to the power 4 of the x. That's the thing which I have. Good guys so far? And now you multiply that by the cosine squared of the x. And now, what do I do? I have power 2 for the term. I'm going to expand this power into the expression. Then becomes 1 minus 2 times cosine squared of the x plus cosine to the power 4 of the x times cosine squared of the x. I expand cosine squared of the x into the whole expression on the left. Then I get what? I get cosine squared of the x minus 2 times cosine to the power of the x plus cosine to the power 6 of the x. Everyone is good so far? Yes. Nice. And now, what happens there? Then I come here. I just try to find the fundamental block of these expressions and write cosine to the power 4 of the x. I'm going to write it as cosine to the power 2 to the power 2 becomes cosine to the power 4. And cosine to the power 6 is cosine squared of the x to the power 3. And I have cosine squared of the x there. Okay. Now, when I have at this stage, I can say that everything now is easy now. Because I know, based on the identity that you learned, and you can derive that the cosine squared of the x is equal to cosine 2x plus 1 divided by 2. And that's an easy thing to drive. Then as a result, I'm going to substitute this for this one. Cosine squared of the x becomes 1 plus cosine 2x plus divided by 2 minus 2 times. Parenthesis 1 plus cosine 2x divided by 2, all power 2. And for the same thing, I have the same cosine squared of the x, but it goes to the power 3. Then the thing which you have to do from then, and it remains for you as a homework, and you submit it today to me before the midnight, is that you have to expand these terms and go from there. That's, that's the best strategy that you don't get into too much... Uh, uh, that's a uniform uh, ratio now. You see that it's going to be very easy by that method. Please, from this stage, you continue it yourself. Take this one to the power 2 and take this one to the power 3. Expand them and use again the cosine, uh, um, the, I should say, uh, half angle, uh, the cosine identity power reduction technique which you learned, and you get to the final point there. Guys, please do that as a homework and... Uh, and uh, yeah, that's going to be your homework tonight then. But please continue from this stage. From this stage is very easy then. We have done something similar to that, but it's going to be very easy at this stage. No complication arises. Yes, everyone? Yes, teacher. Yeah, Linda, is it okay if you continue from this stage? Mm, maybe, yes. <laughs> Give it a try, Linda. It's going to be much easier from there. Okay. Thank awesome. You. Awesome. Thank you. How about you, Brian? Brian? Yeah. 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 Can you continue from this stage? You expand this and see what you get? Mm, what? Can you continue from this stage to take them to the power 2 and 3 and simplify that to see what you get?
Yes? For Oliver, Arya, and Mingjie, and Sean, is it okay for you to continue from there? Yes. Awesome. Mingjie, yes. did you finish this or no, not yet? Not yet. Yeah. Did you follow the same strategy or different thing you did? Uh, I used a different strategy. Strategy, okay. Yeah. Okay, whatever you do, but please remember, submit it today to me as a kind of a homework, okay? Okay. Thanks. How about you, Sean? I fit uh, this question. Oh, I did not finish. Say what? I, I will do this question. Yeah, you do that as a homework, huh? Okay. Yeah. And you submit that today to me, huh? Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, guys. Oh, my God. These kind of questions is too much calculations. And that's so much interesting. So much fun. Yeah. That's, that's, guys, that's why they call that math. It's so fun. <laughs> okay. Now, I think, guys, how about we take a break? Okay. Huh? Yeah? Is yeah. It good? It's time to take a break. Oh, yeah. It's was too much work to do <laughs> for the yeah. first half of the class. Watch <laughs> yeah. Guys, now it's time 10. Oh, what time is it now? 10.04? Let's cheat. Imagine the time is 10.05. <laughs> we cheat for one <laughs> Then come back here at 10.20, huh? We take 15 minutes break then. Okay. Awesome. Then see you guys in 15 minutes. See you guys later then, 15 minutes. So, sir. Yeah. Yes, Aria. See you later.
Okay. Hello, guys. Are you back? Yes, teacher. Fantastic. Thanks, Linda. How about the others? Yes. And who is back? Who else?
Just only you two? No, oh, I'm me. Also Brian, great. How about Sean, Oliver, and Aria? Okay, let's see what do we have for today. Okay, now. Okay, let's see, let's start the lesson. We just start with one quick lesson, then we just watch a three minutes video, guys. Then we are done with the day. Sounds good plan? Okay, let me put my laptop upside down. Guys, now the plan which we're gonna follow right now, it's gonna be very interesting because we are gonna do something. Uh, uh, let me see. Let me put it there. Okay. Now, guys, the lesson which we are gonna have today is gonna be very, very. Uh, uh, fundamental to the thing that we're going to do in future. And this is called the loss for the product to sum. I'm going to do something right now here for you. And you please also follow the thing which I'm going to do. Oh, I think it's too much light, huh? Is it better now? Yes. Yes? Okay. Yeah. Now... The thing which I'm going to do, guys, right now, also, you please also follow what I do, because these things are very crucial. I'm going to come here to write, let's say, for example, the th one of the identities that we learned was this one. We talked about the cosine of alpha plus beta. What was the expansion of this one, guys? The expansion of cosine alpha plus beta. Plus cosine alpha, cosine beta. Are you, are you back? Minus sine alpha, sine beta. Correct? And also, we talked about the cosine of Alpha minus beta. What was that? It was the same thing. We said that it's going to be cosine alpha, cosine beta, but it comes with the plus sign here. That becomes sine alpha, sine beta. Correct? And now, what we are going to do right now I'm just gonna come here and say, any questions guys on these two identities? That's the whole thing which we have done so far. I'm gonna come here and say, okay, I'm just gonna do this one thing. I have these two identities and something comes to my mind. And I say that these two identities, which they are actually a connection of a function of two angles and let's, Imagine that I come here and I say because they have plus and minus sign there in between and they look exactly like each other, I come here to just add them to each other. I have this identity there, this identity here, and I say, okay, what's going to happen if I add them together? What's going to happen? It becomes like this, becomes the cosine. Guys, can you see this color or no? You can change the color, teacher. Okay, sure. It's not a good one. Yeah, it, green is not always good. Then becomes what? Cosine. How about now, Linda? Is it good now? Oh, yes. Awesome. 
Then what happens if I add them together? If I want to add these two expressions together, what's going to, how do you add them? You saw that there is an equal sign here. It means that you add whatever is on the left together and you add whatever is on the right. Then it becomes, I'm going to write it here, becomes cosine of alpha plus beta plus cosine of alpha minus beta. You see that everyone? Yeah? Then it equals to what? It equals to what? I see here, if I add whatever I have on the right side of these expressions, I have cosine alpha cosine beta minus sine alpha sine beta. I have cosine alpha cosine beta plus sine alpha sine beta. It seems that if I add them together, the terms, the second terms, which they have sine, they should be gone because they are, I should say, you see, this is minus this, this is plus this, and they're equal. Then when you add them together, they should be go, they should be gone to zero. Then I'm left with two terms, which they are equal. Cosine alpha, cosine beta, cosine alpha, cosine beta. And when you add them, then you get two times of that term. Then it becomes two times of cosine alpha, cosine of beta, correct? Any questions, guys, so far? Guys, any questions? Uh, no no question. question. No? Okay. No then question. as a result, the plan is that I'm going to, okay, I see that can, th this relationship exists. Then I'm going to write in a way that I, I'm almost done at this stage, but I want to make it much neat. Then I divide all sides by two. Then what do I get? I get cosine of alpha times cosine of beta equals to one over two on this term, which becomes cosine of alpha plus beta plus cosine of alpha minus beta. And now this is one very important identity, which I'm just gonna highlight it for you, which they call that the product to sum formula. We are gonna derive four more identities like that. And they are fundamentally very important things in the math that which we do. Do this here and also there. This is this is called that's an identity which is called product. The product in math, guys, means normally the multiplication. When you multiply two terms together, they, they call that that's the product of those two terms. You have cosine alpha, you have cosine beta. Then you multiply that, you call that, that's the product of these two terms. You see that this expression now gives you the product to some identity. That's what they call. On the left side, you have a product. On the right side, you have the sum. This is plus sign. This is a multiplication sign. This identity is very, very important. And I hope that you also should be able to drive it yourself which is very easy to do that. You simply write the cosine of alpha plus beta and cosine of alpha minus beta, and you add them together, you can drive this identity. This one of four identities which we're gonna drive. Then if you say that, okay, what's the use of this identity? I'm gonna come here and show you as an example. Let's see what happens. Guys, for example, any questions guys so far on this identity? Nothing? 
I'm going to ask you, for example, as an example, I give you something and I give you, for example, two times of the cosine of 27x times cosine of 15x. And that's example which we can just cover that for today. And tomorrow, definitely, you're just going to do more, more examples covering this stuff. But for today, guys, you will see that the two times cosine of 27x cosine of 15x. Now I have the product. Do you see that? Between cosine of 27x, which is my angle, and the cosine of 15x, which is my angle, there is a multiplication. This term is multiplied into this term. And now my strategy is that I want to write them in terms of the sum of these two things. Right? Everyone is everyone understand what's gonna happen? Okay. I'm gonna go back to this formula, guys. Imagine that you do not have multiplication of the two, which I covered that by my hand. Look at this, cosine of 27x times cosine of 15x. Compare that please to the master formula which we have. Which one possibly can be alpha here? Mingzhe, what is alpha probably here? Uh, 27. Yeah, we can say 27 can be alpha or it can be beta because these, these are multiplied. It doesn't matter. And I have also here 15x. I can arbitrarily choose that 15x, which is the argument, the main argument of the second cosine ratio is going to be beta. Then I say, okay, it's going to be probably alpha. This one is going to be beta then it becomes what? It becomes equal to, I'm gonna write it on the below here. I know that it's gonna be based on the definition which I have here. It becomes what? Becomes one over two. Of cosine alpha plus beta. Alpha is 27x. Beta is 15x. What is the summation of these two? Let me write 27x plus 15x plus cosine of the difference of them, 27x minus 15x. Any questions, guys? No. You are fine, Linda? And now, we are not done. You see, I have two multiplied to this, which means that I have to multiply two also to this term. And I know that 27x plus 15x is how much? Guys, 42, yes. 27 minus 15x becomes how much? 12x. And as a result, you can write it here like that, that this expression becomes cosine of 42x 
plus cosine of 12x. And you see that I had the product of two trigonometric ratio, and now they are equal to the sum of two different angles. You see how pretty is that? Sorry, it becomes 42. I just write 4, 42x. Any questions, guys? No question. No questions, you're fine? Yeah. Awesome. Okay, we draw it one more. I, what time is it now? It's 40, 10, 34. I think we can drive let me let me give you one example then we should be done for today i drive more identities tomorrow okay as an example i'm going to give you find the cosine of 3 times cosine of Let's say twelve mm, x times cosine of five y. Let's make it a little bit more complicated. Okay, guys, please turn this one into a def a, a, a sum product. Okay, are you done? Yes, Linda. Aria. Yes, teacher. Are you done? No, not yet. Not yet. Okay, no problem. I'm going to write the formula once more. What we derived was this one that cosine of alpha plus beta plus cosine of alpha minus beta was essentially what? Was two times of these ones, which we say that cosine alpha cosine beta, but we learned that you have to divide both sides by 1 over 2. Which is the main formula. 
And I'm going to do the same thing for this. What's going to happen now then? Mingji, are you done? Uh, yes. Yes. What, what is your answer? Uh, two times one over two uh, times cosine 12x plus 5y time, uh, plus cosine 12x minus 5y. Fantastic, fantastic. Thank you. Guys, look at that. I have cosine 12x. I have cosine 5x. That's cosine alpha, cosine beta. Then what it tells you to do, it says that on the right side, you can just write it as 1 over 2. I follow the same formula which we derived. 1 over 2 becomes cosine of alpha is, let's say, imagine 12x, beta is 5y. Becomes the sum of them because 12x plus 5y. I cannot simplify that any further. It becomes plus y plus cosine of the difference of them, which is 12x minus 5y. But I have to remember that the whole expression, I mean here it has been multiplied by 3, then also I multiply 3 to the other equation then. Then you see I'm done. And the sum, and this product, which is a multiplication of these two, has been turned out into a sum of these two terms. Yes? Any questions, Linda? Arya, Mingje, Sean, Oliver, Brian? Uh, it's the, the beginning, the number is three. That's right, it's three. Oh, I thought it's two. Oh, no worries, it's three. Oh, yeah. But it's okay, as long as the approach is correct, it's totally fine then. Okay, guys, I think um, we, I just want to show you a movie. But guys, tell me, say your name if you are there. Minshi. Um, Aria. Aria and? How about Linda? Oliver and Sean. Yeah, I, I'm here. Okay, let me see. I have a message. How about Oliver? Linda, where are you? Linda. Okay. Guys, I want to show you a kind of a movie today, which is uh, a kind of a thing that we want if you plan to attempt to the math. That's a three minutes movie. Please, everyone, be here. Brian, are you there? Yeah. Ming Zhe? Yes. Oliver? Sean? Yes. Linda? Linda? Uh, Linda uh, sent uh, you a message. Uh -huh. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, yes. thanks. And Aria? Here. Awesome. Guys, I'm going to share my screen. There is a three minutes movie. I'm going to share that with you. Please watch it and we discuss about that a little bit later. Okay. Okay. You have my screen? Guys, do you see what is shared on the screen? Yes. Ah, okay. Then that's good. Then. Okay. And sorry, and you can hear it also, huh? The world around us is filled with important unanswered questions. 
Try this one for size. What is all that math we learned in high school good for anyway? As it turns out, all math, from arithmetic through calculus and beyond, can tell us a lot. For instance, which recycling program is best for my city? How will a new flu outbreak affect the U.S.? Or even, which roller coaster is the most thrilling? These are real-world scenarios for which math modeling can provide understanding or solutions. Modeling is a process that uses math to represent, analyze, make predictions, or otherwise provide insight into real-world phenomena. When you're analyzing and looking at the models and everything, you get to see how these numbers are used and how you can actually apply the math that you see. In my opinion, anything in our lives can be modeled mathematically, so we can always find a pattern in our life. Here's how it works. Start with a basic definition of your problem. If you define a problem, research will become a lot easier and you actually understand what you're doing rather than just mindlessly researching and having so much research but not really knowing how to apply that research. To simplify the scope of the problem, you'll need to make a few assumptions. If you make assumptions, you can get rid of some extraneous and insignificant factors, so your model really only considers the most important variable. Next, define your variable. If you're trying to make a mathematical model, you are trying to create an equation of some sort that incorporates certain variables. By defining those variables, by figuring out what those variables are, especially early on, you know what you're looking for. Now it's time to use the math that you know to build a model. This is where you'll first see your solutions. We just used algebra the entire time. So we didn't have to go into calculus or differential and integral equations. We just make a couple of assumptions so that you can use easy algebra instead of taking some really long, complicated methods. Next, you'll analyze your model to make sure it works. Ask yourself, what can I learn from my model? Does it answer the original question? Does the answer make sense? The analysis is just essentially looking at your data and showing how your data correlates with what the hypothesis that you're getting. Finally, you'll report your results. Model is more than just math. It's what assumptions we made, how we came up with those assumptions, and the justification is extremely important. Math modeling can help us answer big, messy questions about things like recycling options, spread of disease, and even the thrill factor of roller coasters. So now, instead of asking, what is all this math good for? The question becomes, what can't we figure out with math? For more information on the math modeling process, visit m3challenge.siam.org. Okay, let me stop sharing and go back to you guys. Okay, how was it, guys? Sean? That was great. Oh, oh, so fantastic. That's right. Yeah. And especially, I hope that you noticed the fact that it says that by making some assumptions, you can just use some kind of algebraic, I should say, uh, uh, math to solve big problems. Huh? Yeah. That's yeah. right. Something. Yeah. Awesome. And I'm so glad also Inga liked it. And <laughs> what do you think, Ming Uh, I think it's good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, also tomorrow, we have the second part of this math modeling process, the second video, which is also a three minutes. And also from this class, Sean is participating. And from my other class, one of the brightest is also participating. You still we have some time before May the 7th. If you are interested, you can sign in there. And that's a very cool stuff that's going to happen then. Then any questions, guys, for today? No questions. No questions. <laughs> and Sean. Yes. And just also, I have posted some uh, uh, sort resources on the course website, which relates to, I call the folder math modeling challenge then. Okay. Oh, let's see. Yeah. Uh, on the, are you post on the Schoology or on the Science Club? Uh, yeah, that's on the Schoology, on the course okay. website. This is some, I should say, guidelines. 
uh, by before before the May the seventh, which we start the test, not the test. That's a one week project, which you probably I don't know what's the model, what the thing are you gonna solve for futures people. That's so much exciting. Then because you just see how the math so improves people's lives. It's so important that you see some applications for the other people. Then, then before then we just work more closely to just prepare you for the for the challenge. Then. Is it good? It, it's so good. Awesome. And also, Arya. Yes. I pick up a date for you. I post it on the announcements for your present project pro to present your project on the Schoology website today. Then, then you can check it on there. Awesome. Awesome. Guys, if you have no questions, then I see you all tomorrow. Have a good day. Okay, have Thank a good day. See you. Thank you. Have a nice day, everyone. Bye. Bye, Linda. Bye, Brian. Bye, Ming Zhe. Bye. Bye, Brian. Bye, Ming Zhe. Bye, Linda. Bye, Brian. Bye, Oliver.